I have been traveling all over the world for the last 24 years. In few days, I will complete 24 years and I will enter the 25th year. I have seen many countries, many cultures. I have gone to many places of worship of different religions in Israel, in Egypt, in Middle East, in India, in Europe, and also, you know, many Buddhist places in other Southeast Asian countries. And I have spent a good period of time in USA. To me, USA is a great country. It is not only in size, but also the culture it has adopted. It is a country with all best people of the world. You will ask why? Best when I say many good people. USA opened the door for higher education from all over the world. And people came to study. People came for research. And they also invited, come and work here, work for us. You know, US becomes very expressive, us. Work for us means work for USA. So there is one concept, they call it as brain drain. I don't know if you have heard about it. Brain drain. Suppose somebody is born in Brazil, a good doctor, studied in Brazil, came to USA and settled down here. So the brain of U Brazil coming and settling down in USA, it is called as brain drain. So good brains from all over the world came and lived here. Especially I'm telling during these hundred years. Okay. So this country has brilliant brains. It's another thing, this country has respected all religions of the world. This country has respected all religions of the world, opening the door. You can do your own prayer, own worship, own, okay, another beauty. Many of you or most of you, I will not say all of you, are born in this country. One might be, the parents might be from India, Parents might be from other countries, but and you all are born in a transition period from not only from one century to the other century. I was also born in the last century. I'm now in this century. You have a special privilege if you write the history. We entered into a new millennium. It is a speciality. You all are young. You all have very intelligent, fertile brain. Looking at your face, I see. Just like in a family, the children are the future. Parents raise the children up with utmost care, let them grow up and become good children. Similarly, in a country, you are the, you know, hope of the country. And when I travel all over the world, to me, 
not only because of traveling, from my own experience, yes, we belong to one country, we have our own nationality, we vote to the country, but our vision should be, apart from this, I belong to the world, this cosmic or global vision. You know, nowadays we speak of globalization or there is already globalization. A person sitting in India can see the lifestyle of people in America. Earlier, no. When I was a little boy, boy of 10, not 10, 14, 15, I read a book in Odia language, translated from English. The author of the book was an 18 years young American girl. How old? 18 years old American girl wrote a book and the title of the book is At My Home India. I didn't remember the title of the book. I didn't remember the author, but I was impressed by the writing of that young girl. Decades after, maybe more than 30 years after, in USA, a thought came to me about that girl. She's no more a girl. I was sitting in one place, I told, you know, I read a book like this. I don't know the title, but, but this thing I remembered, she was the daughter of the ambassador of US to India in early 50s. With that, one person searched, this is the modern technology. Who was the ambassador? Who was he? And all this, and the book came up. So the book is out of print, but I could get some old copies at my home, India. Then I had the opportunity to talk to her. She was daughter of one ex-governor of New York. You know, her father was a diplomat also, ambassador to USA. When she went to India as a school girl of 13, they had to watch some movie, How Do People Live in India? The movie was given to them to have some orientation, where they are going to live. But when she went to Delhi, she found it is almost like New York. It is a little smaller, but there is nothing different. But she had some strange idea about India. However, this modern world has opened up our mind, which was not there 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. So we are not only American, living in this country, a great country with a great culture, but at the same time, we belong to the world. So the, if, it, if I tell the concept of world citizen, we belong to this world, we owe to the world, we owe to all countries, not only we owe to all countries, all culture, all traditions, all practices of the world. We need that type of outlook. I hope during your stay, because you know you had some thinking, understanding of life. If I were like you, do you know how old am I? I entered 60th year. I entered 60th year, 59 complete, 60th year of my, my life. So if I were, or if God would tell, be like this young, <coughs> brilliant people and be among them, do you know what I would do? First I'll tell, I'll be a good person. You all are good, but I'll be even better. <laughs> so, do you not, know, we live in a time, there is keen competition also. You have to, 
and the nature tells survival of the fittest. If you look at evolution, huge dinosaur, where did it go? It could not adjust with the change of, you know, could not adjust, although it was huge. Great civilizations disappeared. If you, Mayan civilization, Incas, Mesopotamia civilization, Nile Valley civilization, civilization on the bank of Tigris and Euphrates, Indus Valley civilization, so many civilizations you will tell, Greek civilization, Roman civilization, where are they? So if I would be young like you, what I will do, first thing I will take care of, do you know? If I want to be successful any, in any field, I am a student, I will be a good student. I am a son or a daughter, I will be a good son, good daughter. I am a citizen, I will be a good citizen. If I am to speak, I will speak good. If I am to write, I will write good. If I am going to be a doctor, I will be a good doctor. If I am going to be a teacher, I will be a good teacher. So, how? Now the question is how? The answer is to have a good body and good mind. To have a good body and good mind. If the body is sick, I cannot really pursue my project, my ideals, my goals. My so I will try to keep my body as fit as possible. Sometimes in spite of our effort, because of maybe some karmic rule, we might have to pass through difficulties. Doesn't matter, I'll try my best to keep my body fit, but the main thing is mind. Okay? We all have mind. Even a puppy has mind. Few days ago, I was flying in USA from Seattle Next to me, one old lady sitting with a cute little dog. Very cute little dog. And very, it was just like you can say, lovely toy. <laughs> but it was feeling cold. The old lady was holding, petting, kissing. But I felt she is feeling, or she or he, it was feeling cold. I was thinking to tell her, do you know, I think, I feel it is feeling cold. Before I open my mouth, maybe she already felt it and brought the jacket and put on the dog. If a person's mind is good, mind is clean, mind is clear, mind is sensitive, mind is productive, mind is dynamic, mind is focused, mind is goal oriented, can feel it. This feeling, it is not only for myself, I will be good. I will love everybody, I will expect everybody to be better. When I speak of everybody, I am not telling that we the Americans, we the human beings, no. The earth, five elements, earth, water, fire, air, space. This mother earth, river, mountain, trees, plants, insect, even insect, animal, everybody should be living joyfully, happily. All have rights to live. Just like we speak of human rights. If we could have understood the language of the animals, they would have told we have also right to live. You cannot kill us. You can torture us. You can eliminate us. We have also right to live. The plants have right to live. Plants have right to live. So, the main thing, a person to be successful, to have a good mind. Okay? If the mind is good, the understanding will be clear. If mind is good, the goal will be clear. If mind is good, one will put right step, right effort, right decision. This thing I will do. 
Now the simple thing you'll ask, how to take care of this mind? Look, God has given you a body to me and you. God has given each one of us our own mind. Just like we wash our body every day, I came. Do you know what happened? After finished my shower, I washed my hair because last eight days I did I couldn't get chance to wash my hair. So I washed my hair. Then I for, remembered, oh, I have forgotten to brush my teeth. In India, we also brush teeth early morning. So I have for, so again I brushed my teeth. I have forgotten. So I have, as we take care of our body, since last night, I will tell 8 o'clock, 8.15. Now it is 8.15 was 11.15 here. 11.15 and now it is 9.24, nearly 10 hours. I have not taken a single drop of water. That's fine, I can stay. Do you know, I am like a camel. <laughs> I can stay without water for a day or two, no problem. Nothing will happen. I can stay few days without food, no problem. So, just like we take care of our body, we should take care of our mind. Do you know what happens in our... You are young, did anybody tell you how to take care of your mind? No. This is a big blunder, mistake, that they don't tell. Yes, brush your teeth, the mother is telling, before going to bed, brush your teeth, the mother said. Take shower, they told. Sometimes your friend might tell, let us go to gym, have some exercises. Good. For body, people are telling, but more important than the body is the mind. Nobody is telling. Everybody might tell, study well, study well, do this, do that. But my mind is restless. Nobody taught me. So if I were like you, so first I will take care of my mind. If mind is well taken care of, whatever I want, I will do it. Day for yesterday evening, there was an informal get together. So while talking, somebody asked me, how could you remember everything so minutely from your childhood, from your, how could you? I didn't answer, but then he himself answered. Maybe you lived at that moment so focused, you remember everything. Okay. So mind, by nature, is restless. Mind, by nature, is confused. Mind, by nature, is unstable. How can I keep my mind more focused, more goal-oriented? I hope during your stay, you might have practiced little meditation. Might have been taught or watch your breath, watch your breath, slow, long, deep breath. Very simple thing to take care of mind is breath. To take care of your mind, the medium is breath. One is food. One is food. If, if your food is healthy, food has impact on the body, food has impact on the mind. The second one is breath. Walk in fresh air sometimes. Practice slow, long, deep breath. Then read some good books. Read some good books. Some good books with, you know, motivation. Do you know, in my life, I'm a very good reader. I don't think anybody here will challenge me in the number of books I have read. I'm just telling. I can give some challenges on some. So nobody can beat me here at least the number, book, number of books I have read. Even if I am in airport, if I am alone, I go to the bookstore, just look. To look at the books. 
And when I see young children, young boys, girls sitting with books and reading in the usually in the airport, I see people. I get really thrilled. So they are reading. Reading is a very good habit. We all are human beings. I will tell few things and then we can have little question and answer. Modern children are confused more. You will ask why. I am telling my view. Modern children are confused more. I give this viewer statement. You may agree, may not agree, but it's subject to discussion. So when I look at these young people, I see some confusion is there. And why confusion? If there will be no conf I'm clear, this I want to be. This is my life, this is my goal, this is my target to achieve. No problem. Many times I asked young little kids or in school, going to college, what do you want to become? I don't know. Many times I hear, I don't know. Why you don't know? So I will give you a little example why we are confused. If we are confused, we can take decision. We cannot take decision because we don't have clarity in understanding. Mind is not clear. This confusion came, I am telling how. When I was a little child, my mother told some food, eat it. That's all. Breakfast, this is the breakfast today, you eat. And we grew up here, do you know what happened? There are lots of choices. You want cereal, you want toast, you want sandwich, you want this, you want that. So now the child is confused. Remember when opportunities are many, if you do not have a clear mind, you will be confused. I can be an engineer, I can be a doctor. Do you know one young man? Finishing his engineering, wanted to be a doctor. He finished his engineering. He wanted to be a doctor. After he became a doctor, he, he did good job. Do you know what he did? He, engineering and medical sciences combined together. He went to medical engineering. That's fine. It is, but initially, one young girl, I was staying at their home. Parents work. I'm telling this is in modern society. So parents work, this girl, very bright. Coming back from school, I am alone at home. So opening the refrigerator, bringing some food, putting in microwave, switching on television, taking the food in one hand, and spoon on the other, watching television, and telephone rang, holding the... I was observing that young girl, <laughs> she was 15. She was 15, she was holding like this, and looking at television, talking like this. So I was thinking, oh, you eat, enjoy your food, or talk, finish your talk, sit. Mind working, with television, with telephone, with food, maybe some other thought. I'm happy that girl, the parents wanted, they asked me, what do you think what she should study? So anyhow, I told she, she will be a doctor. And she was so good in school, in the state, she topped. In the state. And she was fit to go to medical school without any problem. But she didn't want to study medicine. So there is, I don't know, here the teacher or not, I'm telling in another country, they call actuarian science. Huh? You're also? Okay. She went for that. After two years of study, I'll not continue it. What do you want to study? Medical science. <laughs> she is now a gynecologist. 
she is now a mother having a cute little girl very nice i saw her from you know at the age of 14 15 21 years ago so 36 35 she's 35 a mother a doctor so mind is confused we want to keep our mind confusion free very clear this i want in this country we have so much of opportunities which i will tell why many in most of the countries young people like you they do not have which you have on one hand you are so much privileged when you are privileged remember don't take this privilege as granted take some responsibility what is the responsibility when i am privileged of my age many young people in many countries may not have some food to eat it is there may not have a simple small place to live may not have good medicine for their treatment may not have which i might be throwing away i might have so much of clothes they may not have clothes so we should think in a dynamic way apart from my own study making my building my life my goal my target i also keep my mind my heart open to think that i am not only for myself or my country i belong to the world belong to this entire creation also in somewhere or other i can help anybody i can serve the difference between human and animals okay the difference between human and animals human and any other living beings we have tremendous potentiality simple example suppose there is cyclone hurricane or storm in huh? north carolina we here we are keeping news what is happening can we do something for example with the human beings if there is anywhere disaster we can think we can go there and help i don't know when they gave this name of this hurricane florence in my childhood i knew one girl's name is florence so when i heard this oh, why did they give this hurricane's name florence do you know which florence florence nightingale have you heard of her uh -huh. she was lady of the lamp holding the lamp going into the battlefield surfing the injured and why who prompted her who gave this feeling in her heart that i will go there i will nurse them i will help them who why can't we feel not only we can feel for human beings if we are little bit sensitive we can also feel for others for example suppose there is drought in one part of the world any any country when there is drought famine there is no food no food for human also no food for animals the animals of america cannot send relief to animals in africa but we the humans can send relief for human beings also for animals am i clear that ability we have it, every human being has two qualities within do you know what are those one is divine quality quality to help love serve one is destructive quality i don't like him i hate him i hate her this this is we have good qualities we have 
they exist simultaneously. When I sit here, I don't say I'm 100% good. Do you understand me? We all are human beings. We are a mixture of two. As young people, what I should have done, I should take care of my good qualities to manifest more and not nurturing or nursing bad qualities which will be deviating me from my goal. However, we all are human beings. We are really great, beautiful. And to make our life even better, apart from taking care of our mind, we should use three things in a good way. God has given us three H. God has given us three H. One is the head, the other is the hand, the third is the heart. Integration. I don't know how many of you are studying mathematics. Integration of head, heart and hand. I will help to develop my heart with love, kindness and compassion. I should have good mind, good brain. At the same time, I should develop my habit to give. To give. What shall I give? At least a smile. <laughs> Yesterday I was giving talk. I told you, you know, I am an economist. I know how to invest. And if I invest a little, I want to get more. Do you know what invest I want to do? I said, I had a big smile and everybody smiled. I said, I gave you one smile. I got back how many smiles? A lot. A lot. In modern society, usually people are becoming more selfish. Me and mine. It is really sad. So we have to develop our, you know, mind and heart in such a way we can, we will live, we will live a joyful, comfortable, happy life. At the same time, we should learn to give. To give. You look at the plant. Any plant. If you look at the plant, the plant is giving. Plant's life is a complete life of giving. It gives oxygen. It gives fruit, it gives flower, it gives shelter, it gives wood, it gives coolness. If you look at the plant, how much it gives? You look at a little butterfly or a bee, they give. If there will be no butterfly or bee, can you imagine what will happen? I don't know if you have read. During the last couple of years, there is mass death of bees all over the world. And bees are our friends. Without bees, we cannot survive. It is not only for honey, for pollination. If there will be no pollination, we will not get fruit, vegetable, nothing. Nothing. So, everyone, if you look at the creation, everyone is giving. All are living. We are living. We should learn to give. If I give something to you, whose hand is higher? Yes. The one who gives his hand is always higher and one who receives his hand is? Okay. So this art of giving in Sanskrit, in Indian practices, we call it as Seva. S-E- V A Seva. Seva means to serve, to serve with love. Seva. If I'm just telling how much we have been served, just think. Because we should learn how to be grateful. I don't know if you have ever seen a mother taking care of the baby. If you think of the mother, I think of my own mother. How much she has served me. My mother is no more. Till now also I miss her. 
when I think of her, I feel so much of love because she was a very loving person. She studied only up to class grade three. That's all. But she read so much of books. She had such nice understanding. And my friend monks used to tell that your mother is a love machine. She's so much, so loving. How much service, how much help we have got in our life. I was telling yesterday, do you know, I'm sitting here not to teach you. I'm sitting here to serve you with my few words or understanding. It is my service through words and ideas. I am here to serve you. Yesterday I told, do you know, in this creation, God is the most sophisticated servant. God is not the Lord. God is the most sophisticated servant who is serving us in every footstep. So if we learn to understand that we receive so much, we should also give. Life is give and take. Ordinary life is a commercial business life. Okay, I give something, you give me. But here in human life, one who has a developed head and heart is ready to give more, do you know? So there was a great thinker in India who was a follower of Gandhi. I loved him. He told in a society, there are three categories of people. How many? Three. Thieves, businessmen, and holy or saints. So his definition of thieves, those who take from the society more and give to the society or the creation little, they are thieves. Okay? Those who give and take, businessmen. Those who re receive from the society or take from the society less, but they give to the society more, they are the saints. So what type of life we want to live? Life of thieves, life of businessmen, or saintly. For saintly, you need not have to leave everything, live in a monastery, and no, to develop this heart, head, and hand, I will live, I will be comfortable, but I will also help others, give others as much, as best as I could. This is life of giving, art of living and giving. This giving is serving, S-E-V-A. Do you know what is S-E-V-A? S it stands for service. E stands for service without expectation, vanity, and arrogance. So this is seva. Let us live such a life, life, at least I'll smile, I'll say, hello, how are you? What happened to you? Can I help you? It is not just mere words, it should come from the heart. Grow up, my young little friends, I'll tell my young friends. So, grow up, grow up, grow up. <laughs>